Hello everybody. Welcome to the Micro Studio presented to you by the Umbrella Art Center. Uh, man, I know everyone's been cooped up for a couple of weeks and is anxious to get back into the studio. Uh, but it feels like there may be a couple more weeks before we're allowed back in there. Um, so in the meantime, I'd love to cover a couple of things that you can do from your house. Uh, and we'll just hop right in by figuring out what we can gather uh, from materials to work with. Uh, I know a lot of you guys don't have anything set up or hadn't uh, as of a couple of weeks ago. Um, so we're going to cover some stuff that you can just grab lying around the house. I'll start off with just a fork and a knife. And for me, when it comes to the kitchen knives, the sharper the better. And I usually like to get one that's nice and thin so I'm not really dragging the clay around. Paint scraper just for some cleanup. And then I usually try to get two different types of sponges. One's just a heavy duty one for cleaning up. And the other one might be a little bit softer if you have one, uh, just to kind of smooth over the insides of those pieces. Beyond that, a spray bottle. Uh, and if you don't actually have a spray bottle, just a sponge with a nice container of water will do the trick. Uh, however, the spray bottles are much more even uh, inconvenient. So if you have the spray bottle, go for it. If not, you can go this route. And then lastly, if you happen to have a wire, grab a wire. If not, you can get away without it. All right, so what I thought for the first piece we delve into is actually the first piece that I learned how to make in clay. Um, so these are called elbow pots. The reason being is that you're forming them by grabbing a lump of clay, putting it in one hand and slamming it into your elbow. And that cavity that you wind up making uh, results in, in a really beautiful form. So I'll start by prepping a couple of pieces. Again, I'll just grab a nice lug of clay and I'm going to shoot for about a pound and a quarter. So for me, I, that's about the size of my fist. I'll take the clay, mash it around until I have a nice ball. And then line it up with my elbow. And then really smash it in. So as a result, I'm going to come a little closer. As a result, you're going to get the nice crevice that your elbow actually formed, and then that beautiful impression caused by your hand. Uh, it's really a fascinating way to make a pot because it leaves such a big impression by the maker, um, you know, physically by the maker, uh, that when you hold somebody else's elbow pot, you kind of get a sense of uh, how aggressive they were and, and, and kind of, you know, how their hands felt on it. You can tell the other day I had a little bit of fun playing around making a bunch of these. Again, I would experiment. I encourage you guys to experiment with, uh, with playing around, hitting it as hard or as soft as you want. The other thing is how, how much you tend to roll it around once you put it in there. It can really change over what your shape is. But one of the things about this technique that I, that I really was intrigued about was saying, all right, it is pretty much the simplest clay technique I've ever seen, but where can we go from there? Where can we build it? Uh, so I started to think about using these as the bottoms of tea bowls. So I started making some really small ones. Again, some ones about probably a quarter of the size. And I just thought that would be a great way to really position your hand right at the bottom of it. So we took that. Kind of formed a bunch of these little guys. And decided to say, let's start forming a bowl off of this one little elbow pot. So we'll start with our fork. Go ahead and score all those edges. I'm always pretty aggressive when I score. And then again, give it a little bit of a spritz. If you don't have the spray bottle, this is where you go take your sponge, not too much, but just gently dab a little bit of water. 
The trick is we don't want any pooling water. If you have any pooling water, take that sponge and just dab it off. And then what we'll do is form some coils to start going around it. So when I like to form coils, uh, rather than rolling them out the entire way, I usually start off by just squeezing just a little bit. So I'll rotate and squeeze. Probably just tear that into a couple of pieces. And then I'll put it onto the table. If you are using your kitchen table or, or something like that, feel free to have some newspaper down or canvas or just fabric draped over it. All right, when it comes to rolling, the main thing is you don't just want to go forward and back. You want to make sure that you're rotating back and forth uh, because you are expanding the clay. Now when it comes to coil thickness, I always say it's as much as you can handle. Remembering that once we're putting the coil on there, the, the key is going to be compressing it in and pinching it up. So you don't want it too thick to the point where you can't handle that volume of clay. But on the same note, you don't want it too thin that it takes forever to make a pot. So because these are formed in two separate manners. In other words, this piece here was made by just compression and this one was rolled out. Uh, I am going to score the, them. Beyond that, if I'm just adding a coil onto a coil, I don't bother scoring each layer. All right. Now, one other thing you may have kicking around the house is a banding wheel or Lazy Susan. If you have one of those, it's great to work on. And for me, because this is not a round, or a, sorry, not a flat bottom piece, I'll start off just by taking a little bit of clay, forming it into a circle, kind of a donut shape. We'll set that down to build off of. All right, now we're ready to start applying our first coil. So what I'm doing is as I rotate around, I'm applying pressure from the interior, really melding that clay uh, from the coil down into the pot. And then when I get to the edge, I just break the clay away. I never continue on because I find that it's really important to get as much melding and compression down uh, at every layer. And I find if you start to go up without being able to really compress and work the clay down, um, you do more harm than good. From here, I'm just going to pick this piece up. I'll work that coil down and into the form. And I want to be as gentle as possible because I do want to preserve all that uh, texture that we got from my hand. there it'll go back down and we'll add a couple more coils. I never use that coil that's all uh, scored up just because I don't want to get more score lines into it at this point. This clay is very soft. Right. 
All right, so from here we're just gonna continue coiling up and really keeping it uh, kind of a tighter or a leaner form. So one of the things about coils is that I really wanna make sure that with each layer, as I work it in and pinch it back up, I wanna make sure I'm pinching it in towards the middle. And that way, we don't have our pot just continue to expand. If I give pressure from the interior as I pinch, this piece will start to get wide and it will be tough to control. If I'm always giving pressure from the exterior, carrying it into the middle, the piece will continue to move up into the center. And then when it's time to stretch it out, we'll give our pressure from the interior and we'll have that control on our width. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a couple more coils. Really, what I'm gonna do, it's kind of a fun one, as it stands. Really what we'll do is uh, grab one that I was working on earlier today. So again, this is a piece of that. We just kept on with that method and kept coiling up. It's just been sitting out for probably an hour or two. So we made this kind of bulbous shape. We capped it in. From here, I'm gonna put one or two more coils on and try to get this piece to really flare out. Then we'll go back in, uh, give a little bit of surface cleaning and give it a nice belly. All right, so I'm gonna attach these coils directly on top of the lip. And really applying pressure and melding that inside. The other thing you'll notice is that my coil does rotate as it goes around the pot. All right. We'll work it down on the exterior after we've dealt with the interior. And from here, because I want this, this piece to start flaring back out, now I'm gonna start applying pressure as we pinch from the interior rather than the exterior. This coil, I'm gonna apply just to the inner lip of the last coil. Good, that way I have the ability to control it. We'll still work that coil into the middle and then stretch it out. One little trick uh, to working at home is to try to just keep up on your cleanliness. So as you're working, any of those little scraps of clay that kind of come off, take them, put them right back on your hump of clay. Um, or if they are dried up scraps, throw them in your bucket of water.
this pinching. Really just playing around with the shape at this point. All right, so I'm gonna go back and just apply a little pressure on the interior and really stretch this piece out. Give it that belly that it deserves. Always encourage you guys to take a minute, step back, look at the piece as you're working it, continue to rotate it. This piece is probably going to have a good ways to go. But what I wanted to do was use another one of those little finger pots that I made earlier and create a nice little base for it. Kind of look around and see which one I think is going to match up better. So what I'm going to do is just mark both sides. Some pretty heavy scoring. Either the knife or the fork. Stretch this a tiny bit more while it's flipped over. And then anytime I'm putting pieces together that I've scored like that, I always give them a little bit of a twist. Not big turns, but just these kind of little quarter turns.
kind of fun. So the challenge for you guys is see what you guys can come up with for this technique. Um, it's actually something that I've been doing for years within my sculptures. Uh, this tea bowl one is kind of a new experiment, uh, mainly to, to keep pushing the limits within my studio. Uh, but for the past number of years, I've been making these little sculptures or these little dwellings. And at the top, they all felt like they needed some type of a container. So for me, as a way to kind of put my hand in as the maker, I've always made one of those elbow pots. Uh, so it was always a nice little kind of tribute to where I started. Um, and I always feel like it shows my appreciation um, for the hand in making. Uh, so thank you guys so much for watching. I look forward to making some more videos. Uh, please uh, use the hashtag, uh, hashtag Umbrella Ceramics Community or hashtag Discover Your Arts. And uh, I hope you all uh, stay well and find some creativity. All right, I'll see you soon.